Let's get straight back into it. Welcome. Hey, I forgot to say this morning, welcome Donna. <laughs> so I've been around there, haven't I? Everybody knows you, but welcome to working with our team. Be kind to me, it's my first meeting. Oh, and hi, it's a welcome. <laughs> yeah, that's right, you've got your new role too. Okay, item 3.1. Licensed, uh, oh, the commercial operators. Are you going to take this one? Yes, I'll take this one. Um, so, yeah, I think the report is read uh, effectively um, with Gus down on back, I think. Previously, Derek presented um, a year ago, probably about a year ago, to the community boards around concessions, and they were rolled two years, but the Mercury Bay Community Board made a decision they wanted to just roll for one year. A lot of this was around the reserve management plan mm. progress and you know, these things never move as fast as we'd, all, as we'd all like. So obviously that one year is coming up. So what Derek and his team are suggesting is we just roll for one more year. Uh, and there has been some discussion, obviously, as part of the LTP around um, concession charging and all that kind of stuff. And so we've said that we think we need to do that a lot better. Uh, and like the members obviously have put, um, have given us that direction and you know, have kind of driven us in that direction. So we've done some work, but we're not at the stage where we can actually make any real change to the way we're doing concessions. We don't believe, we don't, we don't think we've got the, um, the data and, and can't justify it. So we're continuing to work on that and that'll be something that we'll probably be bringing back in about a year's time. So from my perspective, I think it makes sense to roll these for one more year. But that is probably enough for me. So I'm just take questions. Tony. Mine's more a comment, Bruce, because this has been going on for us for over 10 years. Mm -hmm. And if we start today, it's at least two years. There's a year's worth of work simply to do what you have to do to, to understand yourself and then start talking to some of the people that uh, are the end effect or the people that would pay the fees. I almost think our organisation needs a, a very small group of people whose real role in life is to look at revenue opportunities uh, for council with a view to offsetting uh, rating impacts. Because it just seems we always run out of resource and people. And so at Evertake this year, and it's only a year ago, we thought we're down a track on how do we get more revenue out of the visitor market, mm -hmm. given it is 30,000 ratepayers providing facilities for 250,000 people. Uh, a lot of that other group will have to be paying more, otherwise we're going to be paying. So we spoke about um, parking revenue, whether that's, not, you know, it drives me nuts when I have to listen to people talk about bloody parking meters. We never spoke about that. We talk about using technology, but whatever the revenue streams are that are fair, I just think we need a dedicated resource looking at that to A, get a document that's sound, uh, to be able to put out in front of people and get them on board because this won't happen in the next 10 years unless we actually really seriously um, see it as an opportunity and put resource to it. And it's not spare time resources to me, it's almost like a full time job for someone to develop the policy or the uh, policy style, like that, but develop the structure around it so you've got something to go and sell to somebody um, that everyone understands. And it's fair. Yeah, that's my, my comment. Enrico? Mm -hmm. Bill, yes. Um, at a couple of meetings I've attended in the last six months, the residents themselves seem to be very keen to control whether or not concessions should be in their area, and they are making noises like they want to be the sole deciders. Now, I don't see how that um, is going to solve anything, but is there any chance that they think they might uh, uh, succeed in, in something like that? Well, they would have needed to submit to the reserve management yes, plan. They would, yes, yeah. Yeah. Mm. Um, well, I've got a longer question over the process. I mean, I, I fully accept that obviously the reserve management um, Revision you know, has contributed, but with the majority of the people that we're talking about, these concession holders along, standing concession holders, are probably aren't <coughs> going to be affected by that. Um, you know, we did sit here over a year ago and say that we were going to review it, mm -hmm. and I think that we got brought up just in the 
last meeting, this, this deadline's coming around quickly. Mm. And I think we're thinking, you know, the British really friends have dragged our feet a little bit. Um, yeah. And I guess what I'd like to say is that there's probably a number, I know there was a number of people that applied for concessions that we said to them that they wouldn't get it on that round and we would be reviewing it in a, in a year's time. Mm -hmm. Now what happens to those people that are sitting there with potential business ideas, mm -hmm. younger people in the community, are we saying as part of this that those people don't have an opportunity for another year? No, so what we've done, so through the chair, what we've done historically is a long time ago, we used to have this as the time frame, this is it, no one can come, you know, in between those those mm -hmm. two yearly cycles. But what we do now is we entertain people coming in between those cycles on the elected member advice that we actually do let people um, come forward um, in between cycles so they don't have to wait um, for the whole you know, the two years or the one year or whatever. Um, so yeah, there is. Um, I've got some notes here from from Derek's team, where there is one, um, <clears throat> one or two who have applied and would like to be added into this round, um, which I'm, I'm relaxed about. So for that one year, just add it, you know, keep it consistent with that one year proposal. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm, I'm happy. Um, I'm happy with that. If the, if could, could we not open it up? Obviously, people that were approved last year mm -hmm. were essentially giving them another year. Yeah. Jokes there. Mm -hmm. I guess what I'm asking is if there are new concessions. You say you've got two, but there might be 10 that are sitting out there that missed out on the last round. Yeah. Could that be an option to, to include, to give them the opportunity to come forward now? For, for a one year? Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm asking the question. Well, anything's possible. I'm just trying to think of uh, the process that would do that. Um, I'm sure that would be feasible. Yeah, I don't. I can't think of any. So I'm just going to go. I just going to say I had people approach me as well, and so. Um, okay. I, I, think, I, I, think, I think if we did do that, well, I'm not quite happy to do it, mm. but I think we would need to go public and say, hey, yeah. we're, we're rolling out here. Yeah. 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 Oh. If anybody new wants to apply for a license for the next year, I think that's exactly what I was thinking. Yeah. 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 We'd have to take an open process. Yeah. yeah. But how is Hang that? On. Sorry. I'm Murray was next to him. Did you have. Yeah. Question still? I'm I'm Sorry. extremely disappointed in this in light of the chief executive's comments earlier on. And I think by putting square pegs and round holes, we have not achieved what we wanted to do because it needs to see someone on a commercial with a commercial brain going out and looking at this properly. Mm -hmm. I'm also concerned, having had some experience in the past, of getting ad hoc, ad hoc applications throughout the year and looking at those. I think we've got to go down perhaps once a year application and that's it. I'm also concerned that last year we held things till now. We had an opportunity in the annual plan, I believe, to increase rates. We didn't do that because we expect to have it for the annual plan. I see now procrastination now, and I see it three years before this comes in, before we get these charges. I see this council moving out on a, this missing out on a heck of a lot of revenue. I see, and I've been saying for a long time, that I believe the current model of existing ratepayers paying for everything that's needed in this community to sustain visitors is unsustainable. <clears throat> and I think if anyone doesn't believe that, they're somewhat naive. So I think we, you know, I, I am just so disappointed, I can't think of reason, that I see this tripling out another three years, another not getting the revenues we, we need, and I'm not saying revenues to penalise, I'm just saying to put the operators on a commercial basis. You know, and I look at a coffee cart paying $10 a week for rent from here and paying $180 a square metre down the road, and it's plainly inequitable. I look at other operators paying substantial amounts to use the wharf, and some people paying a thousand bucks a year to run million dollars businesses, plain inequitable, and we as a council have looked at these inequalities for years and years and years with blood glazed over eyes, and and I, I just I just get so frustrated on this that we sorry about I'm going off, but I get really frustrated that we pay lip service to it, and I think it's been shoved in the council got shoved in the too hard basket because no one has the commercial responsibility to do it. And, and I'm in Tony's camp. I either get some people on council from the council or other expertise with commercial responsibility and get out and do it. Because the commercial expertise within council 
and it's not their sphere, and I totally accept that. Mm. It's sadly lacking. And don't ask me to go and do your job as an engineer because I haven't got that experience. So I'm not being critical in any, mm. any sphere, any way at all. I'm just saying we all have areas of expertise, and councils, because they're not trading entities, this is not their commercial expertise. So I firmly believe we've got to go and buy some. So I'm not blaming anyone, but I just don't want to see it procrastinate any longer because we haven't got the expertise in the organisation. I think it's imperative we get that and get it done. And I also would like if we, we and I don't think we've got any option but to roll over, but I'd also like to say here and now that we in the annual plan this year that's coming up, which we'll be doing for next, next what we do next year, you know, the next annual plan, we've already done this one. The next annual plan, we will start doing some interim measures. Mm. But I firmly believe we do this because I firmly believe the way we're going, this is going to be three years. I'll leave it there. So I suppose um, just to respond to that through the chair, uh, I totally hear what you're saying, um, Councillor McLean. And uh, and I don't disagree. I think we do need some commercial expertise. Um, what I would say is that we have we have we did propose through council, and you wouldn't have been at the council table, Jeremy, so you wouldn't have seen it. We did propose an interim step to change concessions, uh, particularly for the small coffee cart um, type arrangements where we did look and present to elected members about using a, um, a percentage of takings as a method to try yeah. and charge a, a fairer way of um, charging for concessions. So there were a number of options, and yeah. in hindsight, definitely happy to take on that um, that feedback that we hadn't we hadn't gotten as far as we needed to get it before we launched with it. So so not disagreeing with what you're saying, Murray. Um, so yes, but so I, I believe we, that too. Yeah, exactly. I believe we've got some stuff there that we can move forwards on. Uh, and that in a, in a year time we can actually make those changes in the annual plan. So we'll have to have that ready by the end of this calendar year for the following annual plan. But I believe we can make a change to the concessions of that. So I, I do believe rolling over for a year, we can go back out to the market, open up to other concessions for a one year period, um, for the 21 22 year, and then we'll get it all kind of sorted by the end of this um, calendar year, ready for the following year and try and make a bit of a step change. So that was going to be my question to you. Have you got confidence in your own the timeline here to have that ready? The commercial, like making the step change? Yes. Well, we're going to have to bring in some commercial. Um, resource picking up on, on mm -hmm. Councillor McLean's point, I think, because mm -hmm. we got it, you know, with, with the resource I've got with my team, we got it so far, but I don't know if we can actually take it much further. And I think what we're talking about is we need to move it further on than that, so we actually need to get some specialists. We did contact some external people around um, uh, business valuations and bits and pieces like that, but it didn't, didn't come together as, as well as I would have liked to make that step change. So. Eva, then Jeremy. Um, I do just have a question, and I'm hearing what Jeremy and what you said about, you know, if you roll them over and then um, we advertise for any additional ones, is that still going to fit in with the reserve management plan process? Because um, part of the reason for rolling them over is that the reserve management plan isn't really in these submissions about concessions. Yeah. So if we open it up for additional ones, do we do we fall into a trap again with the reserve management plan? That's just my question. Um, that's yeah, it's a good point, and I'm going to have to follow up and check on that. So I'm not, I wish I knew, but I'm not close enough to know that detail. Yet. That's a good point. Um, yeah, yeah. just want to make sure that that was not that that's going to that work. I think we're fine, but I, I think it's, a it's, it's a good point. It's a good point. We need to confirm that. Yeah. Just on this point, when does the new plan be implemented? Where does it do to go to? You know, the, the reserve reserves. management plan. Is that, would that be adopted after? Uh, We've got the hearings um, yes. later this next month. Nice one March hearings. Yeah. 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 So we have yeah. adoption yeah. by council by the 22nd of June. Okay. So it is. Yeah. yeah. Um, I guess. Oh, so that would work. Just following from, I guess even Bill said, obviously there would be substantial feedback from. Obviously, the reserves management on concessions. I, it, we all know it's hot topic in the communities. I guess I understand you from a commercial sense. We need to look at the fees. Mm -hmm. Except that, and I, I very much support what Murray said as well. It just doesn't. It, it isn't commercially even across the board. All or essentially are good companies that have got prime sites aren't paying a commercial rate, mm -hmm. um, but, and that, that needs to be addressed. And I think even you'd find the operators will accept that. Um, the, the question I have is um, obviously the new operators that we may open up to because the, one they're going to miss out on the summer if we don't allow them to come mm. to apply. Um, 
which is obviously quite a big deal. Um, but I would like to see us, um, I guess, have a workshop. We said we'd have a workshop because I think Mercury Bay Ward itself is probably the most affected in the district with concession, with, yes. with concession yes. holders. And I think we're going to have a fairly good feedback on the on the consultation process and the submissions that we receive from the reserve. So I think tailoring to before you your fees, but I think our ward should have a really strong feedback from a community board level on what the community would want to see. And at each strategic site, I mean, use Taha, use Buffalo Beach, there's all, and we've got to make a decision as a board, I guess, is what, what's sustainable, mm -hmm. because some parts of the community say we don't want to see anything. Yeah. Would there be another part of the com community who want to see something? And, and it goes right back to what Tony and Murray said, which I totally support, is there is a revenue opportunity there um, that mm -hmm. without punishing people, but it's paying a fair commercial rate that we need to take advantage of. So I think it's important, and I look at Donna for this, is we do need to action a workshop that after, probably after submissions come in and we see the feedback from the communities on what we want to see in the next round, mm -hmm. so we can use that for our approval process, right? Does that make sense? Yeah. And come to the hearings if you have yes. time, because yeah, they no, will be I mean, they're, they're really useful. Yeah. Yeah, Murray. Can I just ask a question? I think one more time only got four or five concessions tonight. Um, very few, a little bit more than that, but very few. It's a small sorry. number compared to that. We've got more than all the rest put together. Correct. Well, well, more. yeah. I don't even think all the rest twice, gets into yeah. Yeah. twice all the rest. Yeah, twice all the rest, yeah. 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 And I just make that point that the revenue stream affects us more than all the other, and some of the other councillors, to be honest, don't even have any. Well, they had to talk, they discussed one or two, yeah, one or two. Um, it's Mercury Bay that gets Does slammed with pages and pages. Yeah, sorry. No, no, the fees go back to district. No, 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 no. Stay in this ward. Yeah. Tony. Oh, sorry. Just to answer your yeah. question. Um, yeah, so the, the fees stay in this ward because it's community activities um, yeah. and community facilities, which is locally, locally funded. Thank you. So if we put all our reserves go back into the district, the, the funding, we'll put our harbours into district that'll go there but while they're here, it'll stay here. Sorry, Tony. Well, I'll just to add to that. Mercury Bay has the most number of reserves. There's more reserves by double than every other ward in the district. And we have more public toilets. So there's 87 of them funded by the Mercury Bay ratepayer. Mm. So, if it's ever, so what people are saying is right. We're going to forget about every other ward and get on to what we need to do because we bear, well, I think we bear about 80% of the cost. Okay, so we look at the suggested resolution. Did anyone else have, sorry, have any other comments? Um, sorry, so through the chair, I, what I would say is um, that I think we can make it work. So here this point's a good one around the reserve management plan. So either we can open it up now, if it's not an issue, or if it is going to be an issue, we just wait until the reserve management plan is landed. Um, June 22nd. Exactly. Then we can quite quickly after that, we can actually go back mm. out for a one year. So, pick up on Jeremy's point, yeah. uh, concession holders don't have to the final period, you know, so mm -hmm. they that one year that takes us through to when we're aiming to make a step change, you know, first of July next year. Okay. So, um, so, yeah, I suggest we can do that. Yeah. Okay. So, are we suggesting that we add so, other yes. item three to our resolution? Yes. Yeah. Yep. 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 resolution about opening it up. Okay, about um, opening it up to further applications after the reserve management plans are adopted by Council on July, June 22nd. Can I just suggest something a little bit different? Um, I don't think we actually need to wait for it to be adopted to open it up. No. But we won't make the decisions until after. Mm -hmm. yeah. so oh, just right. Make it a bit, yeah. Just make it a little bit looser in, in terms of that, so that we we, um, quite a bit we so that we call for applications in addition to the existing ones, um, and uh, yeah, for a for, for a one year period ending 30th of June 2022. Yeah. So that. Yeah. Okay, hey, let me just quickly check in and make sure Donna is 
So open applications to additional to the existing applications for a further one year to the 30th of June 2022. Yeah. Yeah. So, so we're rolling over. Well, so we're rolling months. over. So that one would, item two would stay. Two stays, yeah. And over. this is the third one. And it's not about existing, it's about opening it up. Yeah. Opening up to yeah. new. Yeah. Yeah. In addition to existing. Oh, in addition yeah. to existing. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. okay. Sorry, did you have a comment? Yeah, yeah. I've, I've got a question. So when those people are applying, then the new plan won't have been adopted, but they'll be subject to the conditions of the adoption. Yeah. So that needs to be clear to them when, when they're in that application yes. process. Yes. Yeah, cool. Yeah. And all the existing ones will obviously get a letter telling yeah. them that there's a rollover. Yep. Yeah. yeah. And that there could be new conditions around that concession once that new plan is adopted. Okay. Um, do you want to write past point three, past this just so one last time? So, recommends to council to open applications in addition to existing for for a further one year to the 30th of June 2022. Did you want me to include what was Delhi saying? Mm -mm. No, 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 that's good. It's not important. It's just everybody. And just looking at Donna Sheep, we didn't get a mover and a second to receive the report. I'll move. Thanks, Tony. Seconded by. Jeremy, all those in favour of you uh, adding that third one. Fantastic. Opposed? None. Carried. Brilliant. Thank you. That takes us to item 4.1. Are we waiting for, are we, uh, George should be on there. Oh, fantastic. Here we go. Hi, good morning. Good morning. Before, uh, um, can I just get a mover and a second to receive the report, please? I'll move. Thanks, Tony. Signed by Murray. Welcome. Good morning. Good morning. Hi. Uh, so this is uh, a report to change uh, traffic control bylaw section five because we need to change an uncontrolled intersection to a controlled one on Abraham Sam Drive intersection with Moway Road and Dakota Drive intersection with Abraham Sam Drive. So everything will be going to a giveaway sign intersection. Any questions? Anyone have any questions? Yeah, I have just one. Um, you know, are you able to pull up the diagram of the, the satellite view of the street? Oh, here, here, here it is. Yeah. The, only, the only question I had was obviously um, coming up Apeson Drive, meaning Maui, there's huge curvature in the corner. From a from a regulation standpoint, there's no, no work that has to be done to that in the future to, to make it compliant or is it so i imagine that because obviously with the curvature this the, the, the stoppage place must have to be a long way back does it at the start of the apex of the yep of the curve does that make sense does it, so i uh, guess what i'm point i'm trying to raise is there's no additional road work that has to be done to change that that curving to make it compliant in the future if we do put a giveaway sign there uh, at this stage, it's actually complying with the giveaway uh, standard from NCTA. We have the proper sight lines and uh, we do comply with all the requirements to change to a giveaway one. Yep, okay. Okay, thank you. Um, when I first read this, I was getting really excited because I thought we would maybe talk about the main intersection of the state highway and Maui Wai road which i know it's a state highway yes but yep. that really needs some change yep you, no. do you understand the big intersection i'm talking about yes 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 yeah. um so that's state highway anything yeah, on the radar radar for anyone tony you might be better no it'd be, like, it'd be way down way down the radar of anyone Two hundred thousand vehicle movements to actually trigger anything that happens there's not two hundred thousand vehicle movements go through there plus a proper roundabout is about 20 million. Um, so, um, so they have these, whatever they call the sleeping policemen. Well, they have the one that you got on the uh, city, the bridge and Pyra, for instance, where they plant it and stuff. Yeah. But yeah, that that is one that is spoken about. But I tell you, for, to get money, it'll be that far down the list. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, I thought it was going to be in this one when I started reading it. So, I got momentarily yeah. very excited. Oh, that's, no, that's, <laughs> that's State Highway. We're yeah, I know. I know. Yeah. I know. All right, any other further questions? No? Uh, uh, George, can I, sorry, can I just want to say something that only just occurred to me? With the, the number three, the 
Where is the giveaway actually going? Is it going on? The Dakota Drive. Oh, Dakota. Dakota. Yes. Which one? Dakota mm -hmm. Drive. That's the. Uh, that's where the giveaway sign will be. It uh, will be given. Give way to the traffic on Abrahamson Drive. I would have thought it might be better on Abrahamson coming out from the rescue helicopter because there'd be very, very low volumes there, whereas traffic going Dakota to Abrahamson would have, yeah, you know, I understand what you're saying. Significantly yeah. more greater volume of traffic. It would do, I understand what you're saying, but I think that when you're driving and you're driving on Abrahamson Drive, you're naturally going to think that you've got the right of way to yeah. get on and you're going to end up with that situation. A little bit, I'm going to reference the main street, a little bit like that. <laughs> Turn on the main street, you know, yeah. as far as that people are going to suddenly, if you're stopping someone and thinks they're just driving through with a giveaway, and someone, you know what I mean? I think, I don't know, George, George might be able to add, I'm, I'm not a road engineer, so I'm just talking. Yep, so we did a traffic count on both road, and apparently the Abrahamson Drive is showing more traffic than the Dakota Drive from our counting numbers. So that's why we actually prioritize based on the traffic counting. Did you count the number of cars going around to the rescue helicopter base? I'm, I'm sorry if you're trying to be a pain, but if I was picking in Bruce's point, I think the opposite applies. If you're driving along Abrams and towards Dakota, they're going to turn right in there and automatically think you've got the right away. Anyway, we'll, we'll see how it goes. You're the expert, not me. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Any other questions? Nope. All right. All those in favour? Aye. Opposed? None. Carried. Thank you. Thanks, George. Thanks, George. Thank you. Right. You'd have bloody road rules when you're in Exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so that takes us to item 5.1, which is our action schedule. Yeah. I have a mover and a second to receive the report. Oh, Thank you. Seconded by Bill. Thank you. Did anyone have any comments? I have one of the um, staff engaging with the ratepayer associations regarding the skate ramp. Did anyone take it? Um, at the moment, it's waiting. So, ha ha, we're yes, will be the ones that we will be engaging with and um, they've got a really good application. But at the moment, there's been submissions made to the reserve management plan in regards to Hahe, to Hahe reserves that mention escape ramps. And so that reserve management plan process has to, has be, to, happen. Has to happen before we can engage fully with okay. progressing that. You will see also over the page, last page of that report that the waste Workshop. Management workshop is on that list there. Okay, thank you. Mm. Um, right, I see. Oh, that's all right. Any other comments? Tony? Might more a comment because only some of these things will turn up here, but still seems to me that when people write to us or email us about something, I can't say they're not getting a reply, but it appears that they're not. My, my, my only expectation is, so for Kim Morrissey to turn up here today, that they'd have a letter in their mailbox by Saturday to say, thanks, we've heard you, and what is happening? It'll be part of the dog, dog Bible review in 2027. But, but something, um, even if it's just to acknowledge receipt of it and whatever's happening, because what they spoke about even cycling strategy, it drives me nuts that we have a cycling strategy. We were the first people to have one in the district, and it was all partly so we get funding. But it's not a, it doesn't happen overnight. So somehow they're going to be bloody told that you just can't go and take four metres of road and paint it green for cyclists unless you actually look at it. Who else uses the space? So somehow, the, because this stuff will just keep coming at us, and you know, there's an election coming up in 18 months, so it'll keep coming at us more and more if we don't um, have a lot of it. It's the same, it's the fairy thing. So it's happened. There is, I'll say, there's no appetite in council for rate powers to subsidise it. So it's a central government issue. 
So she's got all the information. Go away and use it and talk to those people. There's no, no point coming and knocking on our door every five minutes because we ain't the people going to do it. And so I, don't, I just don't know. I never see the replies, but I just feel that we need to have a, a re receipt of your letter or email or whatever on this day if we can put something behind it to say we are or we aren't and get it off our plate because that, that does happen. Mm -hmm. we, we do take you there. Yep. Yeah, well, when I sit here and someone says oh, I haven't heard back since well, June last year, well, I'm, I'm sure that's the case. They don't always have it accurate. But maybe uh, we need to go to the front foot and say, no, we did reply to you on that day, so don't come here because that's there. You've got reporters in sitting around here and you've got people in the public sitting around here who think that we haven't done it. Rather than us go to the front foot and say, no, no, sorry, we're up there because we've come here prepared, we've got all your correspondence and our replies. But then some of these people get away with murder, they come here and just talk about stuff and it's not right. So that's all I just, well, the same people, I'm saying out of the slot today, one, two, three, four, have been here on the same subject more times than I can think about. Murray. Just following on from what Tony said, and take Margaret Wheeler's thing on the gold card, and I'm just asking, would it help staff if we had a resolution, and, and I'm just taking it on the face value, so don't, that this community board is not interested in recommend, will not recommend to council, the council support the gold card because they believe it is a central government, regional government issue. Does it help you or not? Because no. I... <laughs> Because I think that, and I only say that because I think that people sitting here don't realise it's not our issue, it's a central government, local government issue that was brought in under Winston Peters' gold card scheme. And, and yeah. but, but the letter needs to go back saying, get in touch with DNC. But that's not quite right. There is a role for it. Well, the way it was presented to us, they're asking us to play a role. Yes, in I know. And, and we, we can have a solution. We can, we can do that. So I think with that one, we need to do a report back to the community board for you to look at all the different options. Yeah, yeah, okay. Because what they were asking for was us for the, the council and the community board pay the, pay the other 50 percent. WRC will get us 50 percent from the government. We're not going to pay the other. And, and they were, the council. I think the inference was that the council should be paying the other 50 percent. So we need to report back to you on that. Yeah. So okay. through, through the chair, I just jump in on that one. Yeah, I think Alan's right, but I just wonder about the sequencing, you know, because mm. that kind of stuff, um, public transport, picking up on Murray's point, has a regional council function. So whether, mm. as I think Council of Fame was steering the um, member of the public and was get the work moving with the regional council, you get your business case done, that you think it's a good thing to do, you then come to the council, do what Alan's saying, can we please have 50%? Then the staff go, okay, is there a work that's been done by the regional council? Mm -hmm. We recommend you go with the fifty percent, or we don't recommend, or we leave it open to you mm -hmm. as elected members. Then it comes back, and then you guys go, and we're interested, or we're not interested to make not to So can we so do the letter out of in that vein? It's probably useful to try and clarify. Yeah, and to explain that, so that, yeah, so. so that she has a, a way of operating and working. Yeah. yeah. So on that anyway. note, um, it is in process, and I've got some additional information from Marguerite. Um, about conversations with WRC and Scott Simpson back in 2016. So they've kind of given me a clearer direction of who I want to talk to. So at the moment, sitting with me, I'm just um, going to be talking to the Waikato Regional Council Transport Group or team. I'm not too sure what their exact title is. And so um, once I've had that conversation, then that's going to be a clearer picture that I can go back to Marguerite and say, look, this is what we'll do from here and obviously I'll get that information and I'll be talking to Alan and then we can really go back to her with a clear direction because at the moment I'd just be going back and saying thank you, we heard you, but it would be good to have that conversation with the transport group about their background so we can be a bit more detailed in our response. Can we look up what central, because I'm dragging my memory, but central government made an announcement some time ago about whole guard, gold card fund and transport because you may remember it's flying out their budgets over successive mm -hmm. years well and truly and they basically said they weren't going to provide any additional funding and that may be something we can add to to margaret just so she understands that, that you know there are problems with funding well the fillers for example they get a million and a half dollars a year to for gold card to travel just to wahiki 
I'm not, it's definitely wide, Mickey. I'm not yeah. sure, but it's a million and a half a year. Yeah, I think it's a million and a half a year. All of that is subsidy. It just moves over a bunch of shooting. Um, so we, um, just, what if we write sorry, Bill. Sorry. Wait a minute. No. Right here. Yeah. Sorry. What, what's the definition between public transport and private transport? And who, who makes those decisions? Can I just suggest, Madam Chair, we're getting into a debate that yeah. we'll, that yes. we need to report that back to you. That's part of yeah. what we okay. need to Okay, back. fine. All right. I, I'm slightly confused. Yeah. Okay. So where this perhaps is closed on our action we'll schedule, I think it should perhaps stay open. And we'll leave it in staff's capable yep. hands. Yep. Okay. Um, there's one more that I thought that could be closed, and that's the 7th of November on the last page. It says staff review and respond to Lake Car Association proposal regarding speed concerns in the next kitchen. I'm showing sure it's open. Um, I understand that our roading team and Alan have met with the Rate Power Association out there and are looking at options mm -hmm. um, to sort of slow or make it a safer area for traffic. So that is ongoing with the voting team. I thought it was already 30k max. I, I mean, there's two things. I mean, there's, you know, there's speed limits, which, yes. you know, people may or may not mm. go at the speed limit. And then there's physical mm. ways of making it so that it seems like a slower location mm. and people are less likely to speed. So, sure, I understand. Yeah, so they're looking at those. Kind yeah, of so he's right through to Heather's right, um, Alan, and I think, and Ed have been out on site and with the group. Um, there's going to be um, a report going to council before June because we're going to be packaged into a number of changes across the district to try and make those um, suggested changes. And then um, and then with budget coming through on the 1st of July to do the signage change. So I think that one's all on hand as Okay. okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Tony? My view is on that transport with the communication back to Margaret that in no way do we think there's going to be rate pass support for this. We don't want an expectation that the ratepayers are going to subsidise anything. Mm -hmm. I'm not suggesting we are, but... Uh, Let's let the work happen. Yeah, I agree, yeah. because uh, you know, there'll be no... There's no appetite from me and from the others to increase our social spending at all. In fact, I'm in the camp of getting rid of it. OK. Anything else on the action schedule? No? All right. Well, obviously, the ones from today just get added. Uh, yeah, they get yeah. added and, and yeah. responded to. Okay. Do we need to be moving in a second? No. Uh, yes. yes. Yeah. All right. Okay. Um, members' reports. Who would like to start? I, I wouldn't mind because I raised the question with you at, uh, at a meeting we had at uh, Kiritunu about mining concessions and I have total support for what they're trying to do, no problems there, but I have a question that I, I simply don't understand. Is there any benefit to the community that happens if concessions are completed and operated on? Is there, no, is there any opportunity for um, extra jobs or something? Is there something that might soften the blow for those people who are very, very serious about the being uh, against mining. Just a question. I don't know that. I, I, Didn't the Pepham Bill that was going back to 1996, if I remember well, mm -hmm. prohibited mining north of the Cocoa Hippo? They can. They can. Um, Prospect to see what's there, but they cannot mine. Well, and that's government legislation. Yeah, they've, they've got a, a, a prospecting application, yes. but they haven't yet got a mining application. They can't get a mining application under yes. current legislation. That wasn't made clear at the meeting, was it? What are they prospecting? This is our understanding. But this is an amendment this, report. Yeah. Did you got your answer um, that you're looking for? Proving interest against mining bill 96. Yeah, okay. Whoa. Mm. Let's forget it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay, we're not going to debate that. No, yeah, no, we get to make our members Just a course. question, just a question. Apart from that, all is well. Okay, fantastic. Thank you. Tony? Well, I, well, I sent my first part in, which was a summary of the Waikato Regional Transport Committee meeting, and also following that, the catchment meeting. Interestingly, in that catchment meeting, 
there's a, three properties, basically held by three people, there's a few more people in it, who have taken over the drainage issues from regional council to the 60 cent cheaper. So I think in our own organisation, we start looking at where we spend money, it's worthwhile as us as an organisation to also think, how do we get cost out of this game? And sometimes it's by getting people to take on the responsibility themselves, play by the same rules. But if you can take 60% out of a budget, um, pretty useful. Um, I met with Tim Sykes at Robinson Road, and I think that's all over. He claimed that he got a parking ticket for putting his boat trailer park down there. I went down and met him at 8 o'clock in the morning, and the first thing I said, well, there goes a thing says no parking. And he said, well, it wasn't there at all. So it looks to me like it's been here for quite a long time. So I don't know if that's resolved itself. I'm sure it has. <laughs> like many people, since we met last met, um, the rate power meetings that I got to, Wonga Power, Maturang, Hobart Beach, and uh, Forikaho, I really thought they were all really positive uh, meetings. In fact, yeah. they're the smoothest. It wasn't one of those meetings where there was mm. anything came out of it at all of, of contention. The shore management open days, I've been to a number of those and the rest I did online. And I think that the groups, the community groups, are now clearly understanding what the, the role is. There's some very, very good and productive input into those by people. And um, there's another round of those happening in the next week or two. So they've been good, but if you even get the chance to drop by and see what's going on in them, We'll just dive into one of them. There's some pretty good stuff, but at the moment, this is finding out what is out there and with the two issues, and that's sea level rise and coastal erosion and where the hotspots. And Woodyanga is one of the two. So Thames, number one, and Woodyanga, number two. Mm -hmm. Because inundation here is going to bury most of our town. So potentially. Yeah, well, it's, what they say, if sea level rise happens, and it's yeah. hard to say that it won't, yeah. and uh, you get the right weather conditions. Yeah. Agreed. Uh, our CBD is underwater. Not as bad as Tim's. So those are the ones on the radar at the moment. Um, and I didn't think of that, other one, that Rob Riley one with his consent, he can get back on the bandwagon and rejoin it since... I don't know where that's at when he spoke to me and I sent it into here, so that's it from me. Thank you. Similarly, I attended a number of rate payers meetings and I have to say they were all low key. Um, very nice to go to rate payers meetings with it, complimenting what has been done. Um, mm. People are still wanting things and they realise budgets and all the rest of it. Um, that's where it is. Um, there's been a few requests, and can I say start with hand on those? very very well um and i probably had one of the nicest experiences with i don't know walking on the beachfront one night and i just had this we ran into a couple that proceeded to tell us that this was one of the nicest places in the world and you lived here during covid and you're so lucky to live here and you know it's really nice to be proud of your town like that and jeremy you see it every night but coming across on your ferry and looking back on the town and seeing those water those lights of dust is absolutely spectacular isn't it mm. So, you know, I think we've got, I had a colleague who came in last night, hadn't been to town 15 years, former colleague, and he just said the town was really great. Mm. I didn't mm. that He's telling the truth. It's good. <laughs> Be positive. Yes. Jeremy. Um, so I have, I spoke, I think Alan, or Alan and Bob were both here at the Cook's Beach AGM. Um, again, like everyone said so far, I know. The, the meetings I went to were all positive. Um, the Cook's Beach one in particular, the hot topic was freedom camping. Mm. Um, and it was made clear, the, actually the mayor was here as well. Um, and there was a little bit of, uh, I guess, just clarifying what is our obligation as a council as far as what we supply for freedom, camp, freedom campers. Um, I think the mayor was a little off what she put across the room. Um, Anyway, I went for a drive and had a look at the Freedom Camping area, and I have to say it, it was full. Um, and you know, if I was one of those neighbouring properties, I'd you know I'd be pretty disappointed. Like I think whether it's planting or something, I think it does need to be seriously looked at. Um, 
on how maybe it's a simple planning. The other one I got dragged after the meeting down to Transit Road um, boat ramp, and I won't pretend I wasn't up to speed with it, but there was a pedestrian path that had been put through on the side of the Transit Road. People that know Transit Road, it's a where are you talking about? In Cox Beach, it's basically a one one way a little cul-de-sac road which has a boat mm. ramp. Yeah. Um, and from what I understand, and I probably can clarify this, is there is a push to close it from a health and safety perspective. Um, the people I spoke to were obviously really against that. Um, also, certainly when I was there, which was a peak day, there was no issues with traffic. Um, and it certainly was that, that temporary path that had been put through for pedestrians not to be mixing with, with boat traffic. And from from a cook space perspective, I am sympathetic to those that community having access to the beach. And I, this is purely based to launch boats, and that's purely based on the fact that they are with the bar they've got there. They do have limitations on when they can and can't mm. access the sea. Mm. And I feel, certainly from my opinion, that it would be probably not good practice if we try and stop some sort of access onto the beach to be able to launch all year round, all, all, all tied uh, round. Yeah. But not, not everyone's going to take that take that opportunity to do that, but I think for me that would be quite unreasonable because they're quite unique in the fact that they can't, they can't access mm -hmm. across the bar at all tides. Mm -hmm. So just something to consider. Um, I'll, I'm sorry, yeah, just, was just some clarification on that. So the, so what's happened is we put the, the, the vehicle access and the pedestrian access, which would be separated side by side. So that's as far as we're concerned, the permanent arrangement. Okay. And we've had very positive feedback from the community about how well it's actually working, right. separating them out. Yeah. Okay, well, that's so there's great. no plans to change okay. what's there that I'm aware of. And that was my observation. Yeah. Look, look good. Um, and again, you might answer this down. I was also made aware, is it called the main domain? domain? That car park, Central Reserve. there was a push to um, stop double axle trailers or the single only access for single axle trailers. Is any, is this any truth in that? I haven't heard of that one. No. Okay, okay, so maybe it's a, <laughs> I was told by someone, I think, okay, so yeah, and again, there was there was no issues around there. The parking, there was heaps of parking, there's there, there, parking on the right left hand side of the ramp, which was a peak day, wasn't used. Um, yeah, and then um, from a Fidian Town perspective, obviously um, we had heaps of events this year, um, including the summer concert. And I just wanted to um, acknowledge Kirsten's uh, good work. I think um, I think they all went smoothly, and then the feedback I've had is, um, you know, it was a great summer with a, you know, a lot of events and a lot of families got a lot out of it. So um, hats off to Lauren mm. and Kirsten for it. Attracting those things and then I think making the experience good for, for these events. Um, lastly, this, I know I'm also taking this as an FC thing, um, we had a little issue with, um, <coughs> with rubbish and hard hay up to Jerry. I ended up ringing, had, uh, someone rang me and it was just about the contract and using the excuse that there was overhanging branches and not. It got to a point where Rubbish has just been left there, as an, in my opinion, as an easy op option. I ran here and they are obviously gone to it pretty quickly, but with a smart environmental with contract, I mean, they seem to have a lot of ways of just being able to just leave it. Essentially, rubbish was just left there, mm -hmm. um, and which is obviously not great because the seagulls obviously start, people leave their homes, the seagulls just rip into it, where it would have been as simple as the, the the trucks that come in and do the rubbish bins around town, all they could have done is just been diverted up there and grabbed it. Um, so I guess, I don't know how we keep, keep, keep pressure on these guys, but it's just, for my mind, it's un unacceptable that we leave rubbish on the side of the road for, for a week because there's an overhanging branch, they say they can't get truck to. Yeah, so um, so through the chair, that, yeah, that, that doesn't sound very good. Um, I think there's a little bit more to that one than that, but yeah. um, but obviously if there's overhanging branches, then we need to just get that resolved so the truck can get up there. Um, so it's definitely not a. Um, I, I will, my, my response to you is it's definitely not just an excuse to try and find reasons to. Yeah. Run the road. They're going to drive, pick up twenty thousand from twenty thousand properties every every time they do a collection. Mm -hmm. So 
Um, there's no real benefit to them to leave in a few bags around. They know the grief they'll get from um, our communities and from, from my team on that. So, uh, but often those things, you know, between between departments get dropped a little bit, you know, so yeah, most I mean, of the so I'll go through the roading contract to, to deal with the opening branches and then if they can, you know, prioritise it quickly enough and then suddenly we've got a, a one week delay and it should just be done the next day. Okay. So, yeah. So, yeah. Thanks. Anything else? Ellie? Um, yeah, I was at the Kōtunu Matanahi and Hotwater Beach meetings, which were all really well run and positive. And um, an outcome from the Kōtunu ratepayer meeting, someone had mentioned, I don't know whether Brent Page was saying it facetiously or not, but the establishment of a freedom camping area of um, Oh, back road road, yeah. on that council reserve there, yeah, yeah. And I've already had a couple of phone calls from people um, who own properties adjacent or have just purchased land adjacent to that. Um, quite panicked, yeah. and um, I've assured them that there, there's nothing concrete happening in that direction. It was just a comment, sort of a throwaway comment about is that a possible location? Um, Really lovely feedback from Whangapoa um, community around um, their improved boat ramp and thanks to staff for um, the fast action over that. Um, Whangapoa community members have also contacted me and maybe it's because I'm out at Mutterani now. They see you more. Yeah, they see me as that northern person. Um, Concerns about speeds through the village on the summer, and I said, look, put something in writing, get it into us so that we can table it. We'll come and speak in the meeting. They haven't done that yet. Um, they would like to. It's a bit of a similar problem as the Loops Kitchen Kauai Village sort of situation, but they've got a nice straight road there that some of the homes actually home down, which is not great. Um, Band Elizabeth Village Green, Mushroom has been followed up. Um, it's my intention, I'm really sorry I haven't got around to that yet, to contact Zero Waste and ask them, the, the Raglan crew, what templates or resources they have available for free, but also um, because they are a consultancy as well and they do designing contracts between Community Council. Um, designing resource recovery centres, um, just to see what cost is associated with that as well. Um, and also I've got some connections down at the Hastings um, Enviro Centre, and I'm just hoping they might be able to call some favours and get some advice and templates for nothing in preparation for our workshop that we're going to have. And that's me. I just, Great, just thought you. of something else as well. Um, What's the situation with governators? I believe that we're out of stock. Yes. Is, uh, is that long term? Hopefully not. Uh, there was, so through the chair, there was an issue, if I cast my mind back, with the, um, the company that was making them had to stop making them. Oh. Uh, and I don't know where it got to from there. It mm. probably got to, we had some requests, but there was a lot of requests, and so the thing just died, you know, because it was yeah. a high demand for them. But obviously, yeah. If you're one of the people that wants to go later and we're not now offering them, I can imagine that would be quite frustrating. So I'll follow up with the team and see what yeah. we've got to because I were looking at whether there was sure. some alternative supplier. But yeah. it might have been a, a niche product for a point of time. I understand that. No longer, um, but uh, I was. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, but I was sent outside because um, um, we had a, we've had two attacks from seagulls, and, and I'm not quick enough to get their registration number, so I can't. You know. So I just wondered what was going on. Through the chair, I wonder if that again is like it's chicken and egg or doll and egg, where. <laughs> um, Publicity around something like that, you know, do people know that sort of product is available? It's like it's not available. No, but no. <laughs> <laughs> maybe it would be available. You know, it's available. You know, it's like yes. yeah. I'm I'm not too sure because the major pro problem out at Mount mm. and I'm sure there is at the other mm. holiday. Bar. I mean, through the through the chair. Sorry, just um, answer that. Um, we, we did used to have the gallinators, but obviously our preference is to try and educate customers around their rubbish and stuff. You know. Yeah, okay. I was going to say, it just brings home the point 
And I've noticed it's start, I think it's believing to increase on this town now. People are putting out bags on Sunday night. Now, we should say the dump is open till about six or something Sunday night. Like that, yeah. You know, I see them out there. They're out two days. I and I firmly believe the bylaws, if they put them out, we leave the dump open, we should book them. Mm. You can't leave the rubbish open two days. And mm. you can't do it anywhere else. Why, once again, have we got this tolerant thing when you step around and do everything for people, they leave it out, the birds get at it, and we're tolerant again. Mm. You know, I firmly believe we should have a campaign and say, if you're going to put it out two days, expect to be booked. And put it back to the landlord. People reading the houses book a bag, they'll soon stop it. You know, it's problem is like it's okay here or the way there's a somewhere to drop it off. Some of the communities don't have well, well certainly within this town there's plenty of room. Yeah, I know some no, of the Woody Acid. There's an awful lot of it at the moment. Well, we have those container type. What are we calling them? Yeah, we need those contract well. well. I think All through the chair, I think you know, in time with the new contract, which is uh, <coughs> which is not that far away, um, you know, it's a couple of years away, um, two and a half years away. We'll, we'll possibly be moving to Winnie which will deal with that. I just, what I would say is that I hear what you're saying about enforcement, um, and I think it's definitely something because there's a number of areas where we said we need to resource up for enforcement. And I wasn't at the last council meeting was on leave, but I understand. There's a big discussion about enforcement around a number of areas. Well, so I hear what you're saying, but we also need to be realistic about people just drop their bag outside someone else's house. No one has uh, yeah. bills anymore with their name on them. Everything's online, so it's very hard to find yeah. out who's the bag yeah. to book them. Mm -hmm. So it is a challenge, but not saying we just put up the white flag and give up. You know, we need to look at what we do. Sure. And I think you're right. We definitely could do a lot more. Um, but there's another issue as well. Out by half past seven, collected by four o'clock, mm -hmm. and that that's been just recently has mm -hmm. been very late. So the so the issue with that through the chair is yeah. that um, they have to get the collections done across a very wide area. I absolutely agree. Yeah. So they can't pick up everyone early, and the other thing is that they have to change mm. change the route. So yeah. means, you know, hey, I always get my collected at three thirty. I'll just put it out ten minutes before that. Yeah. The next collection they come at eight o'clock, and you're stuck. So yeah. Yeah. It's a difficult one. Make it hard and fast seven thirty. So what Bruce is saying is under the new contract. All rubbish issues will be solved. Yeah, Bruce, Bruce <laughs> that's, that. I'm pretty sure that's a summary. Are you feel like you're putting words in my mouth now? <laughs> rubbish will All be right. illegal. Shall we finish these members' reports? <laughs> finish the meeting, and then if we want to have a discussion and pick Bruce's brain, we could do that then. Well, he may not want to be. Okay. <laughs> Adele, are you done? I'm done, thank you. Okay. Um, so, for me, very quickly, um, I also attended. Um, Otama, Kua Tunu and Masarangi Rakpah meetings. Very positive. The Kua Tunu one was very complimentary of some staff and I did give that feedback to them. Um, it was lovely to hear, actually, and great sort of community and council working together. Um, what else was I going to share with you? Uh, oh, at the, just before Christmas, um, Bill, Alan and I attended a meeting with the folks at Masarangi on Kenwood Drive, and that was a really good meeting to pop out there and actually have a look at the site. And we had a really good conversation. And um, Ellen is going to bring a paper back to the board uh, around how we progress out there. Mm. Um, I had a call from the Hot Water Beach um, Surf Life Saving Crew and just wanting to get an update on where we are with donations on the pay and display. I understand that. There was some, I'll follow up again. Yeah, if you could follow up on that. And maybe if it could sit on our action report so we don't forget mm -hmm. it. Um, and also getting in place sort of the ticketing of tour buses and things like that and just getting that all lined out perhaps while we don't have so many visitors. Um, as I mentioned earlier, lots of positive feedback on the new skate park, lots of kids in town using it and older folks. It's fantastic. And, oh, that was one comment. Did we do enough over summer to monitor the trailer boat parking area? Because every time I went down there, it was just full of cars. 
But it's such a popular hub. It cost me 45 bucks. Did you hack it? And did you get stung? I got stung. And I look every time I go to cars, there's lots of cars and yeah. no trailers. So there is enforcement. So who do I apply for for a rehab? <laughs> I can decline you right now. <laughs> decline me right now. Well. <laughs> I would say that just from being in some services, I do that down there once a day, if not. Yes. Excellent. I, I just, like I said, I saw all the cars. Yeah. I hope that we just. I don't even have a tow bar. <laughs> it's such a hub down there, eh? Now. It seems quite under control, right? The whole, the whole launching and retrieving, and it wasn't chaos. I didn't mean, look up line up the road. I didn't see any of that. Oh, <laughs> I just saw that car always full of cars, not yeah, trailers. Yeah. There, was, there was a lot of feedback. Yeah. Okay. Yes. And that's a no, thing? I've lost six beers from, from paying that fine. <laughs> <laughs> Don't you pay a little cat's pockets? Oh, shut up. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, a mover and a seconder to receive the members' reports, please. Oh, Murray, Dally, thank you. And I guess that's not the end of the meeting because we need to move into public excluded. Mover and seconded, move into public excluded, please. I'll move. Thanks. Seconded by Tony. Fantastic. We just, just need to stop the. Just wait till we're